Today, my guest is uh, Juan Parasa, and uh, Juan was uh, one of my students at University of Arizona when I was on faculty there, and uh, Juan graduated from, uh, from uh, the Eller College of Management at, at, at University with a finance degree in uh, 2014. And uh, so it's, it's, always, it's always good to catch up. Juan, uh, thanks, for, thanks for being here. And uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of people watching uh, this are my current students at University of Tennessee. So I, it, it's, it's, it's fun to make, um, to make those connections um, as well. No, but but yeah, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for your time today. So, uh, so, so Juan, you, uh, uh, right now your current, your current job is uh, with Goldman Sachs. Um, in uh, in New York, and and, and what what's your uh, what's your job title? Yeah, uh, I'm a vice president uh, in the global markets division. Okay, so um, and, and that's that's not an entry level job, I know, and and so um, you know you're you're six seven years into your career, and so um, c congratulations for mm -hmm. um, for all the, the the success you've had, and uh, on the side you uh, you're you're a, a CFA charter holder, which is no small task, uh, we all know um, as well, and so um, I'm, I'm and I'm I'm just super proud of you, and I'm, I'm, I'm just thrilled that, that that I had the privilege of, of being one of your professors and it's uh it's it's great to it's great to catch up but um I you know I want to talk uh, uh in a moment about your current job and what you do but but since uh, many of the folks watching this are, are really kind of where you were uh, eight years ago um right. I I want to I want to go through a, a little bit of the journey um first and so my my recollection is that that your first real kind of exposure to Wall Street was through an internship. Is that correct? So about junior year. Yeah, that's college? correct. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. Uh, tell tell me about tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So no, and, and like I said, th thanks for having me. It's a it's a pleasure to to, to be here. Um, yeah, it was it was a you know one of those you know summer internships uh, you know the, with the with with Goldman basically you know the big banks have you know this you know structured internship program that you you know if you it's it's really hard to 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 get you know basically like an out of school job in in one of these banks so the best shot is, is through their formal you know recruiting program and in through the summer internships so between junior and senior year I did a uh, an internship in the in the global markets division. It's not called a global market division, but it's basically sales and trading. It's the easiest way to just like, you know, um, compare it, I guess, to the other uh, banks, right? Um, and it's a, it was a 10 week program. Um, you know, uh, we basically rotated through different uh, desks. Uh, I did three rotations in emerging markets was my first rotation, then leverage finance and electronic trading. And obviously it's kind of like a very big, um, you know, 10 week interview, let's call it. Um, you meet a bunch of people, you know, you're put in very uncomfortable situations in terms of just approaching people out of nowhere and trying to build relationships, uh, you know, in, in a very short period of time. And, the, you know, they ask you obviously tough technical questions to try and understand what you know, what you don't know. But after the whole thing, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very good program. You learn a lot. And, you know, hopefully you come out, you know, after that program with, with, you know, an offer to come back. And, and, and that's, you know, that was my case. I, and, and I got an offer to come back to emerging markets, basically. So, uh, so, so sales and trading. Um, so um, just, just to be clear, what are you selling and what are you trading in, yeah. <laughs> in, in these types of roles when you, when you say that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because I, it, it's, it's, a, it's also not an easy question to answer, but basically, you know, we, we, we divide, I think, I think the, the most, you know, the easiest way to think about it is you have by, by investor or by client type. So, so obviously if you, if you, in one hand you have, you know, your hedge funds, your pension funds, uh, your asset managers, you know, think, you know, uh, Fidelity and, you know, um, maybe, you know, the TIA or the teachers, you know, pension fund, et cetera. Um, all those guys obviously have, you know, an, an asset side or, or, or an asset portfolio, basically. What they're trying to do is they have a pool of money and they're trying to you know, make investments and, and transact with the hopes of generating a return for their you know, stakeholders and et cetera. So those would be clients of ours, uh, those type of investors with a, a different team. So, so let's say you know, a pension fund wanted to get exposure to emerging market bonds the emerging market sales desk would have a relationship with, with that pension fund 
and would sell, you know, emerging market bonds to them. But at the same time, you would have, you know, same pension fund looking to trade maybe, you know, uh, mortgage-backed securities or or uh, treasury bonds. So the so the interest rate sales and the mortgage sales team would have a connection within that same with that same client, but for that specific product. And then obviously you turn around and there's a trading desk behind each of those product sets. So we would have an emerging markets bond desk that trades the bonds and, and, and that you know interacts with the salespeople that interact with the end client. And then the same thing for you know treasuries, mortgages, et cetera. So, so be, depending on where or, or the business unit or the client type, you would be doing different things. In my case, I cover corporate clients, so a different type of client exclusively in Latin America, focus on natural resources. So basically that's, that's already very, very niche, right? Uh, but we have, you know, counterparts of mine maybe cover corporates as well, but, you know, in the technology sector that are interested in, you know, hedging some sort of risk that they have on, on, on their, you know, day-to-day -day operations. So, you know, depending on where you sit again, you, you and another time type, you know, you're selling and trading different things and uh, with different, I guess, uh, motivations behind that. Yeah. So you, so, uh, so you got that look um, between your, your junior and senior year, and then you, you had to go back to, um, to college and uh, get everything done. And then uh, at, at some point um, during your senior year, I guess you got the, you got the full-time offer because I know that you you had it in hand for, for, for quite a while um, yeah. you know, waiting to, to go back how, how how quickly did you get the offer after the internship so um, how it usually works is um, you uh, you know you, you're, you're 10 weeks in the internship and then usually you hear you know you hear back pretty much like two weeks after the end of, of, of your internship it's typical to hear you know probably around two weeks um, obviously business needs change all the time. So maybe, you know, uh, it starts getting a little stressful because you hear your, you know, your friends are getting offers and you haven't gotten a call back and it's probably just like, you know, people, you know, figuring out the last, you know, details and, and, you know, maybe, you know, they need to reshuffle a couple of headcount here and there and, 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 you know, that gets delayed, but it's usually like two weeks or maybe even, you know, maybe even a month after, after you're done. So when you come back. Uh, to your senior year, you, you, you effectively are your, your entire senior year knowing what you're going to do after graduation, which is a pretty good feeling. <laughs> I yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's a, there, there's a little bit of a senioritis thing going on um, in there. And you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what, what's going on here? Um, but, but, but yeah, it's a, it, um, having, a, having a senior year in college, uh, knowing that your employment is, uh, is secured on Wall Street, um, uh, that's, that's, that's got to be a very nice thing. And, and so, yeah. so you went back, right? So I, um, it, it, I think it's it just, just reminiscing uh, for me. Um, I think the last time that uh, you and I actually saw each other physically face to face was at your um, at your graduation ceremony um, in Tucson, you know, I'm I'm leaving uh, very soon to go back to New York to go to Goldman. And um, so, uh, did you step right back into the same group then um, in, in your full time job? And and, and what, yeah. was, what was and, and and how was uh, how was the um, sort of the first month on the the, the real job? How is no. that different than than your internship? Yeah, it's 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 really interesting because you have this sense of so so like i said i got hired to 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 one of the teams that i actually you know spent three weeks with during during well, three weeks working for them uh but then also you know during the internship you you come back and you you have you know conversations with them and etc so you spend a lot of time with the, with the group that you're going to end up working with um so you have this sense of oh i know them i know what they do they know me uh, and I work for them already. So you have this kind of like, I, I, I don't want to say, say like this false sense of security, but kind of. Uh, and when you, and when you, when you get there, it, you're no longer an intern, you're, you're, you know, you're a full-time employee and, and now it, it's on, right? Like you're expected to, to do, you know, great work. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that's expected from you. So the learning curve is really steep. I feel like when, when you're an intern, obviously the learning curve is very steep as well. But you're an intern, right? And 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 it's it's okay. Like people, you know, you you're you're you can ask a lot of questions, and 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 
you get that chance to meet a lot of people and, and kind of like, you know, see where you fit in the bank. Now you're an analyst, you're full-time headcount, like, you know, you're, you're now you're expected to, to, to work for your team. And, and obviously you, you, you're still going to learn a lot and people are very helpful. And I feel like Goldman has a very, you know, um, strong mentorship, mentorship culture and, and people want to teach and people want want you to learn. Uh, but obviously, you know, you also want to make sure that you're showing that you're getting in and you're performing. So my experience was obviously, you know, the, I, 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 I think that after six months at the desk, I felt like I had a good grasp of what was happening. Um, but then I, I, I always tell first year analysts that it takes probably a year to actually become productive because the first six months, you're just a little lost. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then by the end of month six, you're like, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. But then month seven, month eight, you have like, you know, ups and downs because one day you do great work. You're like, oh, great. I'm crushing it. I understand it. You know, I know the ins and outs of this. And then the next day, you know, something completely random happens that you've never seen. So you have, you know, you feel like you have a terrible day. You feel like you haven't contributed. You, have, you feel like you could have helped more. So it's like, uh, up and down until the end of like your 12th month. I feel like your first full year, I feel like you've seen pretty much everything that could happen at the desk at least once. So you're not completely blindsided. And, and at least you know who to ask, who to go to. Um, so for instance, I, I, there's two, two analysts in that, that, that work in my team now. And I tell them all the time, like the exact same thing. You need to give yourself time, put in the hours, put in the time, put in the work, but it's going to take at least a year for you to, feel like, okay, I, I, I can help, I can contribute. And, and that's, you know, that's what we expect, right? Like we know training for people takes time and, and that's totally fine. So, so, you know, I feel like sometimes analysts like, you know, are too hard on themselves because, you know, obviously you want to be, if, you, if you're in this field, you probably want to, you know, be, you're probably competitive and you want to do well for yourself and you want to show that you get it and you can help, but it takes time and, and it should take time, right? It's highly complex stuff. So, yeah. that's that's how i would describe it yeah so uh so how long uh how long was your time as an analyst it was uh basically two two full years as, okay as an analyst and okay and then and then what did you transition to after that it, it, so typically how it works is you go from analyst to associate uh then vice president and you know yeah. managing director partner etc yeah, but you but you had a little bit uh, a little bit of a different journey. Um, yeah. So so what what was next for you? Yeah, so 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 like I said, I I um, I, I joined the, an emerging markets team, um, you know, focused on, on corporates, and one of our you know sub you know focus areas was uh, natural resources. Um, for whatever reason, during my time as an analyst, I started working with the person with a VP at the time. Uh, that was, uh, you know, most folks on natural resources. So I started learning about oil. I started learning about natural resources. It was also like, I, I never looked at commodities before until I joined Goldman full time. And it was also a very interesting time because it was right when um, the whole, you know, shale revolution, let's say that we hear now all the time was, you know, happening. It's been happening for, for years, but the impact in pricing only happened until then. So it was a very exciting moment to, to be in those markets. We, we used to have conversations with clients that said, you know, oh, oil is at, you know, 90, it fell $10, it can't fall, it can't fall in a 10. And then, oh, it's at 70, it can't fall. Like, it was just a, a huge uh, drop in prices that made me really interested in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the market as a whole. So I started, I continued to work on commodities. And, uh, you know, for, I, I started thinking about what else I, I liked within finance, right? And, 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 and uh, you know, there's this, there's this hedge fund that that uh, invests in 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 emerging markets, and they were looking to hire an analyst. And I and I knew them through you know my you know my uh, my CFA studies and you know just your friends and, and and network that you start building in New York. Um, and I, I started meeting them, and and uh, and I basically got an opportunity to join that hedge fund uh, two years after after being at Goldman as an analyst. Um, to in, to basically invest in in a, in a value uh, uh, long short uh, equity fund in uh, in emerging focus on emerging markets. So obviously the fact that I you know I'm originally from Colombia, I you know knew the region. I was focused on natural resources, which is obviously a very important part of of, of you know the the publicly listed companies in in, in Latam. Uh, that that was all interesting to them. 
and went through the process, got the offer, and it was very, I, I, was, I wasn't looking to leave Goldman, but it sounded like a very exciting opportunity, and, and, and I took it, and, and I did that for basically two years. I was an analyst in that fund for, for approximately two years. So, uh, so what was what was your job like there? I mean, you, you, I mean, you're you're switching from basically the sell side to the buy side. I yeah. guess. Uh, I mean, you're you're doing a lot of the same same types of uh, you're thinking about some of the same types of things, but you're you're doing it for a very different purpose, I guess. Yeah. What what, what was your what was your job like at the hedge fund? So it's it's a it was a very di very different role. Um, obviously, when when you're at a bank. Uh, and, and, and you're in sales and trading, you usually, you usually have, you know, clients and you're talking to your clients all the time, talking about the market, you know, you are basically producing content for, or ideas for, you know, the outside world, right? In, 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 in the seat that I was in uh, as an analyst in this fund, it, it was much more inward looking. We, 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 we're doing all this work and looking at these companies and going through financial statements and, and earnings calls and, you know, reports and stuff like that for our own sake, right? For our own investments, for our own decisions. So <laughs> my wife used to joke that I, I, I got paid for reading, uh, which is not untrue. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and, and if you're, if you're uh, so she would just to say like, oh, you don't really work and just read the whole day. And, and, and it's, it, it was, it was a lot like that, right? Like, so, 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 so it, it's, it's very interesting because if you, you know, if you're, you know, intellectually curious and inquisitive and you want to learn about, you know, for instance, I, I think we talked about it a, a, a while ago, you know, if you want to know a lot about, you know, the Nigerian banking system, that's, you know, stuff that we would spend a lot of time doing, like learning about banks in Nigeria, how the system works, who are the top players, who has like the worst, you know, loan book and, and, and which bank do you not want to invest in? So it's a lot of reading, a lot of thinking, a lot of obviously modeling, accounting work. So you don't talk a lot to, to clients. Um, the people that maybe you talk to and or, or who you become who the, becomes your clients are your you know your investors. Uh, so so uh, depending on how that the fund you know handles its its business and how big it is, you may or may not be involved in those discussions. Uh, we, it, for us, it was a very small fund. Uh, so you know basically it was you know uh, two analysts. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a senior analyst, and then the partners. Uh, three of the partners were invest, were focused on investing. So it was basically six of a fund of out of twelve people were were in, in focused on the investing decisions. So we tend to be very much involved in the conversations and know what was going on from the investor side, what questions they were asking. Uh, but for instance, that's very different from a very big fund that maybe has you know investor relations department that handles all the outside communications and all that stuff. Yeah, I think, and this just this just uh, 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 is one further further piece of evidence that every single thing in finance is unique. Every job, every company, every role, everything is 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 uh, is is unique. Um, and 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 that's one of the reasons I'm, I love doing these interviews because uh, I get to get to talk to so many uh, different people doing so many different things. 